Okay, here's what we have to do. We're gonna do leg like colors and stuff, but we need to make some shapes to start to get the um, the body finished. And then, so it's like leg coloring, shapes, um, face, and then pelt is the is the process from here. But let's do some shapes. Like, I don't know, kind of like until I eat, I don't feel like fussing with the leg. <laughs> that's, my, that's my reasoning. Um, and plus the legs are just, they're a little bit kind of like up to you in terms of color and stuff, but I'll go through how, what they still need. So we're going to take a nice 12 inch piece of the core and we're going to cord, um, oh, what did I say? I said thirds, but I need it four times. Well, let's go ahead and make it into thirds. So best you can make that into thirds. Go ahead and do that again. Um, make thirds again. So we'll use up all these pieces, but we need four of them. Yeah, we need four of them. And we're going to make four Zoli tool shapes. And they're all going to be the same. And two are going to go on humps, and two are going to go a shoulder hump, a chest, a neck hump, and a hump hump. <laughs> and a hump hump. <laughs> So we want three inch, approximately three inch um, rectangles. So kind of make sure you have enough to go out and back. And I'm really drafting this out to make it go the whole, the whole distance. I'm wrapping more like, I guess like a two inch section and then it kind of ends up three inches. Little by little, <laughs> the you camel gets its hump hump. <laughs> I will build this camel. Your play on the couscous proverb. <laughs> oh, oh. I want, I want. This one's a little bigger than the other one, so I'm going to use this one for the chest. That's just the way. Okay. I think I can launch my car. Okay. All right. We got four humps. One's going to go on the chest. So just right to the base of the neck. They don't have a really pronounced chest, but we do need a little suggestion of a breastbone. Getting it stuck on there. Here are those wires in there. Mm -hmm. One's gonna go. Oops, sorry, that was <laughs> me. I need a. Um, oh yeah. I need a, a stab mate. lab, please. Where would it be? There's one back in my workspace. Oh, okay. One's gonna go over this hump, which looks like it's out of whack, but they all go long ways, front to back. So one thing actually you can do with this is just stab it together at the top a little bit. Thank you. Give a little little support. And that way you have a little bit more of a peak. Yeah, these things are coming in handy. Oh, I love Why these Why didn't things. you get them like three years ago? I don't know. Live and learn. Thank you. Then one goes over this hump to make it more humpy, <laughs> more hump-like. I love these kinds of pieces. They're so satisfying, unlike the foot ghost. <laughs> These are just like big, broad strokes that make a big difference. Yet all the pieces are important to the whole. 
See, that's proverb-ish. Mm -hmm. And then this one I put down here because we want the neck to get broader down here, but I don't want I don't want to lose this 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 dip here, so I put this one at the base of the neck. Kind of meets that chest piece. Okay, okay, let's see, what's next? 12 inch off-white chunky core rolled into two and a half inch big puffy pillow bellies. Okay, so two 12 inch pieces. Kinda, you're gonna use the whole width here and you're gonna roll it into two and a half inch Big puffy Big pillow puffy bellies. <laughs> belly pillows. And they go kind of like the that spine wire is right through here. So sort of right even with that, the top of it, and the bottom of it is off to the side and hanging down a little bit. I like that. That's like one big swoop. One big swoop of a piece. Whoa, yeah, that's, how much that's something. It's like a mess <laughs> on the other <laughs> side. <laughs> Although the insides of our bodies probably look like that. All kinds of different parts and places. <laughs> sure do. Oh my gosh, and my favorite things when I was little was to like, with Play-Doh, my friend Jenny Riley and I used to do this. We would make it like people on the operating table <laughs> with, with their skin open and make all the <laughs> body parts out of Play-Doh. Ew! <laughs> Is that weird? Yes. <laughs> yes, no, I didn't do that. You didn't do that? Nope. That is so weird. <laughs> like, I grew up with an artist and a doctor and a... Okay. You know. All right, that's fair. <laughs> okay. Now, this is even more fun, is the great big belly wrap. I think I'll do the great big belly wrap and then do the corners. So this, you need like a long piece. You need a good, you know, 24... 30 inch piece, but break it in half. Like, let's not get crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Milo, oh my gosh. I hear paper ripping in the other room. So just make, making sure it's even. And then I'm gonna get this whole kit and caboodle here. Crisscross over here. I can go straight. Well, let me do the crisscross and then I'll go straight over. So this wrap kind of tightens everything up, holds it on. Like don't that those belly pieces were on the loose side. So if anything, you want to make everything a little bit tighter. Um, and then I'm going to use the other half. And maybe go around this whole thing. Nice. Yeah. Let me look at it from the other side and make sure I'm getting things even-ish.
as I stab, I want to define the base of the home a little bit. I just kind of keep that in mind. Like I kind of try to stab in. Stab in here a little bit. So it kind of goes <laughs> belly. <laughs> Okay. We need four 90 degree tacos. <laughs> four tacos with a angle. With an angle. So I'm going to try and get like two inch core pieces. These shoulder blades and kind of butt cheeks. What are we yeah. talking about here? So let's see. For the elbows, we're talking about elbows and stifles. So for the elbows, let me take a three inch piece, three inch piece, and split it in half. So those would be our elbows. And then for the stifles, this, I'm gonna use a whole, a whole piece, but I'm gonna try and get it a little closer to two inches um, than three inches. So I've got two of those. So you have to make them opposite they can't be the same shape because there's one on the left and one on the right. So you're going to make a simple taco. But then this one, one corner I'm going to make like more defined. So I've got my fringe. I've got my rolled edge. And then I've got one rolled corner. So this one I have to do the other way. So they're mirror image. So what a nice rolled corner. <laughs> this is where the stab web really comes in handy. All right, so we've got mirror images, and then let's just go ahead and do the other one. I restacked it, try and make it more of a two inch square. This one is an elbow. We'll go here. So it's going at the top of the leg. I don't know if you remember, we did that elbow bend an inch and a half down. And then we just want that rolled corner to stick off a little bit. And for this to come up to the body at the top of the leg. So I'm just gonna get it started onto, I'm kind of feeling where the wire is dabbing along each side of the wire. Milo, you ate and your belly is like still, it's real talky today. And then turn it over. You can see it, the amount that it sticks off. And then this, you just want to come around. And that's what really, that's what really helps hold it on. So the smaller of the two go in the front. Yeah. The elbows. <clears throat> elbows is.
and then the knees do the same thing except in back here So right off that angle there. Be sure to <clears throat> refer to some pictures as you go, because you can see, hopefully you can see what these pieces are when you look at the body. Super common proverb is about the straw that breaks the camel's back. Yes. Yep. It's a problem. <laughs> it is. It's so true. Let me go too far. That last piece too far. I can't even hear it. It sounds like it's going to eat me. Oh my <laughs> gosh. I have a broody hen. <laughs> Thanks to Ed and Laura, who are needle filters. Um, they, they gave me some, some oh, what are they called? Pullets? No. Uh, I don't know. They gave me some young chickens. One of them turned out to be a rooster. He cock-a-doodle dude for the first time this morning, by the way, <laughs> at 4, 4 a.m. So his timing's a little off. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> what? <laughs> so loud. Fortunately, one of the other neighbors in the holler already has a rooster. Oh, good. So I'm not going to get, like, you know. Your house egged. Yeah. So the broody hen is sitting on her eggs in a corner in the chicken coop. And I put some water in there and I put some food in there because I swear she's not getting up. I haven't seen her move in like two weeks. And I'm wondering if I'm going to have chicks. Oh. Chicks. I'm also wondering if my cats are going to eat the little chicks. So I have to oh. find out about that. Oh, chicks. Yeah. Wouldn't that be... I might have to bring them in here. That would be so yeah. fun. So I opened the door to check on her and I swear to God, she fluffed herself out. And made a noise like a velociraptor in Jurassic wow. Park. Wow. She like, ah! <laughs> like she did this like weird like. I, they are dinosaurs. Like if you ever look at them, they are totally dinosaurs. Your stomach just made that noise. Is what oh, I'm good. Yeah. Well, it's trying to keep so you. He looks kind of like a um, AT AT. Is that what they're called? At at or is it AT AT? I'm so not a Star Wars person. Oh, that thing. Okay. I don't know what they're called. Totally modeled after camels, by the way. Almost. There's yeah, they look like camels. Yeah. Okay. Ten inch quartered four times. Oh, this is fun. We get to do another big like fell swoop. See how fast we're going through our core wool. Another 10 inch piece, 12 inch piece, quarter it. We're going to make four soft pillows. So not on the Zoli tool. And they're going to go, they, they're going to go, <laughs> they're going to go here on each side, here and here. I don't like, I want this on here better. So this is piece cake, and you're gonna make them about. If you think, if you think half an inch, you're gonna end up at about an inch. So you're just gonna roll these up, kind of straight around. That's a bit much. So I don't need quite all that. So I'm taking that off. Four times. <coughs>
Yeah, it's like about as, it starts off sort of as wide as your thumb. Oh, I'm getting bigger and <laughs> bigger as I go. That's okay, I can pick which ones I put where. So two of the bigger ones I'm going to put on the shoulders. So this is like making this shoulder bone. So kind of the fringe goes towards the hump and then the other side goes towards the chest. And so it's a little bit of an angle. Not like this, not like this. A little bit of an angle connecting these two areas. I've seen people ride camels between the humps and behind the hump. Behind the hump? Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever seen it. Like they don't sit up here on the neck. Like you do on an Behind elephant. the hump, I feel like you would just slide on the neck. I know. Just got a good uh, a friend a uh, call from our good friend Lee. A call? Yes, watch this is why I'm wondering what's up. So I'm not paying attention to you anymore. A call on our work phone? On my cell phone. <gasps> it's okay. It's a shipping question. Oh. I haven't talked to Lee since all her trips. All right, I'm going to pick in this little one. I can't talk today. I was trying to tell my dad that I was filming the caramel tutorial. <laughs> and I couldn't say it. I was like, I better figure out how to say it before I have to do it. I'm just going to stretch it out and make it taper a little more. And then just soften this. I'm trying to soften this transition a little bit. I don't want to lose the dip, but I don't want it to be... A gigantic hole either. <clears throat> so I'm going to do both sides so I can make sure it's centered. I'm trying to get these pieces felted into the wrapped armature is what you're doing. They can't just be floating. They can't be floating. they got to be stabbed into place. And then this one, this is kind of too big of a hole here. So that's what this one's for. What do you call a crying camel? Um, I don't know what. A humpback whale. Alrighty. I'm gonna do one like one thin wrap on the neck just to get everything secured. So I'm taking a quarter a quarter of a twelve inch piece. You're getting close to the end of your bundle. I know. It's crazy, isn't it? Which means you're getting close to finishing at least building it up. Mm-hmm. So I'm using this to pull everything in, like I'm actually t making it tighter than it is. <laughs> I'm making my wrap tighter than these. It's the Spanx concept. Yeah. There, now we have a nice... We need to get the head a little more built up. We need a nice cone shape. What? <laughs> I thought the head looked pretty good, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> just giving you a hard time. <laughs> like yesterday, I went shopping with Erin, and I held up a pair of pants, and I'm like, aren't these cute? And she goes, you need to be tall, tall enough <laughs> to wear them. <laughs> I'm like, tall enough to wear pants? Like, <laughs> tall enough. Um, let's take this other quarter from that. 
Were they a print? No, they were just... Oh, they weren't even... I'm thinking if they're a they're print, just, maybe you do need to be tall to pull them off. Dance. She's very petite. Um, so, yeah. So, I think she, she... That's what went through her mind. But I'm just like, it's just pants. <laughs> like, you have to have legs to wear pants, Sarah. <laughs> it was funny. I was giving her a hard time. Like, you a hard time. <laughs> the head needs a little more. Okay, I'm going to wrap towards the nose and back. And my goal is to keep the nose on the skinny side and concentrate more of the wool towards the back of the head so we get like a cone shape. I'm doing it. You are. You are achieving your goals. Yeah. I also want to start to think about the neck being kind of flat this way. Which is why, instead of just wrapping, wrapping, we put a piece on the top and the bottom. But I can also encourage it by stabbing it. I like to encourage things by stabbing them. I guess we have a fly in the house. So it's pretty camel shapey. Um, well, Milo, we are at the we are at the top coat stage. That, that's exciting. I know. We're at. Yep, combining wrap. Oh, a combining wrap. We have one more wrap. So I had a combining wrap on the neck written down in my notes, and a combining wrap on all the legs. So I ha still have a half of a twelve inch piece. So I'm gonna quarter it. Or uh, well, you know, split that in half and make quarters, and then I'm gonna take these this way. So now I have four, um, about sort of six inch quarters. And I'm going to, what I want to do is make this transition a little bit more um, normal. So I'm going to take this. I'm actually going to wrap here a little bit and kind of make that upper leg muscle that they have, like just build that up a little bit. right there and then I'm going to try and get that elbow corner I don't want to totally smush it but just like I'm basically trying to bring it bring it all together here you know having your work against a surface really is going to save you time. If you try to felt in the air, it just doesn't do the trick. Yeah, this is definitely a project to have that set. Yeah. We should put that in the notes to put in the... Put in the notes? To put in the put notes. In the notes to put in the... On the supply So package. here's how that comes together after. Here it is before. So in this direction, I start on the elbow because I'm going the other way here. And then I want to get that kind of muscle build up here. And then I finish this way. I have one student that flips hands so that her wraps are symmetrical. What? No, I can't do it. I mean, it can do it, but it feels weird. So this is the same thing. Um, I can add a little muscle right here. I can also do a little tendon type shape I'll show you. I'm going to do one more. Pretty, just brings it all together. Oh geez, I just ripped it apart. 
brings it all together. Rip. Okay. One more. I'm sort of like keeping this where I want it to be. If I just pull it, it's going to pull it around, but I'm going to keep it there. Yeah, they got a nice little muscle going on right there. I want to build up. So how you work your roving ribbon is a big part of how your project comes out. Like if you keep it narrow and tight, it's going to be more, um, it's going to be skinnier or you're going to make little knots. If you keep it broad and a little looser, it's going to pull things together and blend. So this wrap actually had both. Like I stayed kind of broad and loose here, but got a little tighter here. So let me show this. They have a pretty pronounced, um, it's basically their Achilles right here. And if you have any, a couple of little pieces of wool, which I'm sure you do, you can wrap the end of a pencil or the end of a Zoli tool. Um, but you want to wrap about an inch, inch and a half. Just get close to the tip. And that's it, like you don't need too much. And when you slide that off, probably could have split that in half and used it. When you slide that off, round this end out. So stab it back on itself, watch your fingers. So you make it a little ghost or like kind of lump on the end there. And then this part, make long and skinny. So this you want to kind of taper. You're making a tadpole. You're making you're making a sperm is what you're making. It's just the way it is. It's not, it's tadpole really. So you want like that sort of rounded, lots of wool at the head of it and then skinny tapered at the tail. Oh my gosh. So I gotta round this out. One got kind of pointy, it's okay. Stab that pretty well so it keeps its dimension. And then I'm letting that not get, like just the tail end is getting felted. And then have a long thin strip, long, like four, four to five inches oh. thin strip. Oh. And put this here. And it's going to make the hock look bigger, and it's also going to make the leg look like it actually has a tendon. So your thin strip holds this on. They have like a bone that actually comes up here, but this will have the look of that whole joint. Kind of stab that dent that's between the tendon. So cool what you can create mm -hmm. with some fiber. I know. You have to make sure that stays lined up in the back. Yes, you want to make sure that's like kind of even with the where the joint folds. I got so many songs going through my head today. I'm really trying not to sing them all. <laughs> They're all desert ones. I don't know how you know that many desert songs. I think the people might like to hear them. You should let them rip.
All right, you ready? We're ready. Ready. We're gonna do some coloration. <laughs> okay. Um, let's get, well, okay, let's work on the legs. I wanna put this lighter tone on the bottoms of the legs. So this is all that I have. So I want to make sure that I split it between the four legs evenly. So I'm going to break it into four pieces. I might want, might want some for the face. So I'm going to, I'm going to hold off on that. I'm going to put oatmeal. I need, I need to build this up a little bit. So let me work with the oatmeal a little bit. All right, this is all that I have left of the oatmeal. Uh, so I'm gonna split that into four. Let's see, I wanna work in strips, so I'm gonna split it into four narrow strips. What you use is like, you know, please just, you know, think through your colors here and um, you could even do this wrap in off-white and then use a much thinner bit but I think I'm gonna do this in oatmeal and then wrap the hocks in that top coat color you could use the tan here with a lot of tan um, you could use you could do this in off-white you could do this in the lighter gray So at the bottom here, I kind of want to take the fringe and try to make it, um, try to make it become one with the foot. Like, just let that fan out and over overlap the foot. Did you have a joke, Mara? I have a joke. I should look it up so I don't say it wrong. <laughs> Where is it? What do you call a camel without a hump? What do you call a camel without a hump? I'm sorry, I know you can't see when I do this, but that's okay. I gotta stab the right way. Um, I don't know what. Humphrey. <laughs> I really like that name, actually. Humphrey? Yes. Oh, I did two hind legs. Super skinny right here, so I'm going to bulk that up a little bit. Who can I name Humphrey? A dog? Sometimes I think I get animals just so that I get to name them. <laughs> I'll name all my chicks Humphrey. Yes. Henrietta, too. It's a good one. Yeah, I like Henrietta. This one's not as skinny, so I don't have to put quite as much. So, like, these wraps are your chance to even things up a little bit. The feet basically done at this? Yeah. Well, that's yeah they have like kind of an extreme dip here in between the toes. The way we make them, you can't totally get that, but you could put a little color change in oh, there. A then. little dark. Yeah. All nice. right, now I'm gonna use this, or do I wanna go darker? <coughs> Where did that come from? <coughs> You'll do this on the knees. <coughs> so I'm take a nice six inch piece, <coughs> quarter it, <coughs> And then for the knees, I'm not going to need, I'm only going to need like half. 
half this quarter. And then just do a little crisscross on the knee here. The legs are a little, look, I didn't even use all of it. I just want that bit. The legs are a little fussy because you, you're gonna have um, a lot of color changes and to make them not look stripey, you've gotta put some color going vertically. To blend. Yeah, to blend things. All right, so I like I like that I like that darker look on the knee. This knee is a little skinny, so I'm gonna build it up just a little bit. Am I still on top of like all over the place? It's not too bad. Right now you are dead center of the frame. And then the hocks. You know, kind of longer, wider bit. can be hard to get this. I don't want to lose that shape here. Oh my gosh. Was that you? That was... <laughs> yes. It's <laughs> a killer fly! <laughs> There's a couple flies buzzing around here, and I'm trying to keep the fly off me, and I felt something big land on my shoulder. It was me swatting the fly. Yes. And then we just heard the dog do it. <laughs> I kind of want to go see the Jurassic Park movie that's out right now. Speaking of velociraptors. Yeah. And dinosaurs. I remember seeing Jurassic Park. It was 1994, I think, 93 or 94. In the theater? Mm-hmm, in the theater. And walking out of the theater and like looking over my shoulder for dinosaurs. <laughs> they just made it so believable. Yeah, it was good. Like, even back then, you know. Actually, stabbing on the legs can, like, you can get some, um, some color change by the stab through kind of can help blend. All right. Now on the upper legs, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch to, I'm gonna switch to tawny. I'm just going to work with thin strips that, probably about six inch thin strips. And then wrap the upper leg between the sh elbow and the knee. And then you'll probably need a blender, but we'll figure that out later. Like maybe I'll actually blend some tawny and that other color together to help make that transition. Camels can carry up to 500 pounds on their backs. Huh. Which is like 
I thought it would be Half a little bit. Body I thought weight. it would be a little more, but I guess that that is a lot. Five hundred pounds is a lot. Five hundred pounds is like two really big people. But they only weigh about a thousand pounds. Yeah. It also says they can run up to speeds of forty miles an hour, which is really fast. Yeah. So for now, I'm just wrapping the legs, and then I'll do like some kind of crisscross wrap to get the the stifles and elbows. Camels are herbivores, no meat at all. Mm -hmm. Um, I wonder what they eat. It says, due to their very thick lips, they're not picky eaters, due to their very thick lips, they can eat some things that would seriously hurt other animals, like thorn-covered plants. Oh, so they can eat, like, cat, they can eat desert stuff. Yeah. Makes sense. They also don't start sweating until the temperature reaches 106 degrees. But they do sweat. Yes. I think if you were on like near a sweaty camel, that's not a good sign. No. <laughs> that means something's gone yep. wrong in life. Yep. And <laughs> that would be the black camel <laughs> yeah. at your door. Get out. Find a way to change your circumstances if you can. Most mammals would die if they lose 15% of their water. That's when you become dehydrated. But a camel can lose 20 to 25% of water without being dehydrated. Which, I guess, is why they can live so long. Right. Yeah, that's wild. Alright, I'm going to put Tawny on the tail. Preserve my tawny. <laughs> I think I can do it. I wonder if this is a situation where you want to wrap from base, from tip to base. I'm going to try it. How do you get that tail to not be split? Just keep you scoot this down keep so that pulling it, it together. You scoot this down so that it goes oh, over forces. It more. Yeah. I wasn't sure where the end of the wire was, but thank you for pointing that out because now Well your other camels have that. Yeah. Count on me to pick things apart over your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're a good team. <laughs> So do they use their tails to swat at flies and stuff? Like Probably a little bit. I don't think flies survive where camels survive. <laughs> That's a tight wrap. Yep. Oh, 
I would like to spend time around some camels. I think. Are they friendly? I think they can be. I imagine them as like, like sometimes I wonder with like horses and elephants and camels, not so much with dogs, because I think dogs are, because dogs are predators like us, they, they get it. But with animals that we use, you know, to work or to do things or to help us or, like I, I kind of wonder what they, what they're thinking. Yeah. Starting to look camely.